we're starting to see, and I'm curious as to your thoughts on this, we're starting to see people use the SEA as its own version of attestation. Yes. Because if you think about it, right, um, a, an SCA report uh, is an awful lot like a SOC 2 report in the sense of the, uh, call it the intensity of the actual audit program itself. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, how can I say this being politically correct? A lot of organizations will go with a SOC 2 report because mm -hmm. they're paying for the big name that goes on the report, mm -hmm. right? They're paying for the opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. This dives more into what you need to know what is in black and white for you, for your management to be able to look at and digest and start to develop next steps to addressing issues that they find mm -hmm. at, I don't want to say a fraction of the cost, but at a significant reduction in cost. And we're seeing a lot of internal audit and compliance organizations use this, as well as assessment firms going in and executing this for their clients mm -hmm. in lieu of having to do a SOC 2. Um, and we're seeing smaller organizations have been doing that because they don't have, you know, uh, the, the money that it costs to yeah. to go now, listen, out and get a SOC to, to. listen you know especially after the 2017 update mm -hmm. to the to the SOC guidance um you know it's not an inexpensive proposition if you get to a reasonably you know reasonably mainstream you know call it a regional uh named uh, CPA firm you you know yeah. you're probably looking at 40 45,000 dollars you know for a t traditional uh security uh and availability uh, SOC 2 attestation, type 2 service orders report. So yeah, I agree with you. It, it is, it has become expensive to get there. And I think that, you know, the SCA is an interesting alternative. And it's